Hey everyone, I'm going to the flea market today. Happy Saturday. And while I'm driving, I'm going to talk to you about so many refunds I've been giving lately. And it's not for reasons you would think. Let's launch this reseller, Robo. channel I'm so glad you're here my name is Beth and I sell on eBay and Poshmark mostly pre-owned clothing and appliance parts and mostly plus sizes in the clothing I'm on my way to the flea market this morning to see if I can find some appliances to part out because I have zero at none to part out right now and then I'm gonna go head over to some thrift stores and then I'm gonna go up north and see my parents so going to get a lot done today I think. So while I'm driving I wanted to talk to you about a problem that I've been having this week. It's been terrible. I have been giving so many refunds it's not even funny. And not for reasons that you would think. Not for returns. Like I have over 4,200 items listed in my store. I have 60 day free returns. Majority of those items are clothing. I get very very few returns. Now I'm giving refunds for different reasons. Um, the first one, I sent out a Land's End dress. I knew it had one spot on it. I had put a green arrow in the photos pointing to one spot, but I sold it anyway for about 20 bucks. The lady gets it and she writes me and she says, I know there was a green arrow for one spot. She's like, but did you realize there's like two or three spots on this dress? And I was like, holy crap. Now, when I put it in the washing machine and put the spot remover on it, I obviously knew there were several spots, but when I took it out of the dryer, hung it up, photographed, I had forgotten that there was more than one spot because my binder clips were not on there anymore from the, from the wash. And so that was my fault. And so I gave her a refund and then we talked about what these spots could be because she's like, I don't think it's blood, I don't think it's coffee. She's like, I don't know. And I told her what I used to, you know, treat the spots and, you know, best of luck to her. And she said she was going to try something different. So right there, that was like 20 bucks. Okay. The next reason I've given refunds is I sold a blender jar, a ninja blender jar that I purchased the last time I was at the flea market. You guys may remember that video. I paid $20 for the machine and all I got was the blender jar and the blade. Now, I sold the blender jar for like $53, alright? And when it arrived at the seller's place, the box looked like somebody had run over it with a truck. The bottom of the blender jar was completely crushed, including the plastic and metal that's on the bottom that attaches the jar to the base. It was horrible. And... I didn't want it back and so what did I do I refunded $53 now like I said I only paid 20 for the two pieces but I did have to pay the shipping on this blender jar so I'm out that all right and I can't sell the jar anymore so you know I'm kind of stuck What in the world? I'm back. I'm having to take a detour. The whole entire freeway entrance ramp is closed to where I need to go. So I'm a little bit concerned. Um, okay, so, and then the other one was a carafe, a Mr. Coffee carafe, and um, it arrived the whole bottom of the carafe was demolished and the box as well. I'm really glad that they included pictures of the box because the ninja guy, ninja blender gar, jar guy, told me there was nothing wrong with my bubble wrapping, that no amount of bubble wrap was going to save 
that blender jar. I, I have a green light, guys. Why are y'all going? I have a green light. I don't understand. Boy, I'm really kind of scared to film this right now. Everything's happening. Okay. I had a green arrow and everybody's like going. They shouldn't be. Looks like I'm going to have to take a long way around to get to this flea market. A really long way. That would have been nice to have known. Okay, so I, t I talked to Bridget Lost Treasures about this and I said, is the problem because I am using Ground Advantage now instead of Priority? Because, you know, I sold appliance parts for like four or five years and I never ever had a glass anything break. I know how to pack crafts. I'm experienced at this. But back then I was sending them priority. And I was like, if I have to send them priority, I will. But I knew Bridget would know. And she says, Beth, she says, I send items, ground advantage, glass items all the time. And the boxes don't arrive like that. They don't separate the ground advantage from the priority that way. It should not affect it. Her advice to me was to continue sending items ground advantage um, but in addition to my great packaging do even more I don't know if that'll help because if somebody runs over a box with a truck <laughs> uh, no amount of bubble wrap is gonna save it so I'm really taking a chance but I don't know so I don't know what you guys think. Are, is your opinion I should send glass items priority? I mean, I really trust Bridget. She's been doing this for years. She sells thousands of items a year. But So that was $53 for the blender jar and about $30 for the carafe. So now we're up 80, 90. Now we're up to like $100, okay? And then, I don't know if I've talked about this because I haven't been on live ever since January we were having problems in the Houston Sorting Center and I was having to open up missing mail cases constantly I mean we made national news it was terrible items were not tracking items were not moving and so about a month ago that pretty much stopped for me and then it picked back up big time like I've opened like 10 cases this week for missing mail claim but this is even worse it's saying I didn't even ship the item. It's just saying that I created a label. And my guy scans on the porch. So it's not going into the system. So I have all these people messaging me, why haven't you shipped this yet? Why haven't you shipped this yet? And then I'm opening mail claim, missing mail claims. And my one of my temporary mail carriers, I stopped and talked to her one day about it. And she said they are having major, major tracking issues right now. And... Um, and it, it, it is so bad, you know, and I said, well, I, that's why I need you to scan it on the porch. But then I realized that even the ones that are being scanned on my porch are not track. They're not tracking. And so, so then I thought, well, maybe it's the ground advantage again. Maybe the ground advantage is screwing me up. Maybe I need to be sending this stuff priority. I don't know. But then I, because I realized that I don't get people from Poshmark telling me they're not getting their packages and those go priority and then I remembered I did have one on Poshmark that said she had not received her item and I had to get her name and her address and uh, track you know file a missing claim for her but only one but when you think about the number of Poshmark packages that I ship out every month in um, you know as compared to eBay that would make sense that the majority of them would be eBay so, I don't know, guys. It, it's been horrible. So, there was a stainless steel Mr. Coffee carafe that a guy had been waiting for. I shipped it on March 10th. Today is April, what, 6th? He still hasn't gotten it, and it still says I created a label. I opened a missing mail claim for him over a week and a half ago, and it has not moved. Normally, when I open the missing mail claim, it moves, but this one did not. 
and I didn't want him to open a case. He was very, very patient um, for the most part. He just couldn't understand. I think there was a language issue there. He just couldn't understand why the package wasn't at his door. And finally, yesterday, because I didn't want him to open a case, and I didn't even know if he knew how to. Nobody should have to wait that long, guys. Nobody. Um, over, over, you know, 30, like, how many days is that? 20 days at least for a package? No way. So I told him, I said, you know what? I'm just going to give you a refund for this craft. And if you will please message me if and when it arrives, I would really like to know if it ever got to you. And I think he lived in Florida. So that was another $32. So now I'm at like $132 in refunds for, for not even returns. And then, you know, I have returns for fit. Of course I do. I think I had to come in this week. Several people have never sent the item back. So this has been a real frustration for me and I don't really know how to handle it because the U.S. Postal Service never fixes my problem. You know, the they just pass my house and they don't pick up and then I make a complaint and then they call me and I tell them, you know, this has happened three times already. They never do anything. No, there's no consequences for not scanning and then you know the postal workers are already telling me yeah they know about the issues and they're they're aware that there is a tracking problem and then and then it's funny come on motorcycles almost hit me guys um anyway it driving in houston is horrible i shouldn't be doing this i really shouldn't so anyway they know about the problem and what what else am i to do you know if my guy's scanning but it's not showing up then i mean it's out of my hands <coughs> so, I've been reading the Daily Stoic every day and just trying to let it go and try not to look at my bank account and, I mean, honestly, this is the first time that I have um, calculated how much I've spent in the last week on, on refunds and I've been trying to let it go. It's out of my control. I can only tell people I'm so sorry and I don't know what to do. Oh, another thing I did, it wasn't a refund, but I bought these baby Brezza bottle sterilizers and they had these little, they look like toothpicks almost, these little spiky things. And I didn't, I don't know, I, when I grabbed the part that sold, I grabbed the wrong one and the lady messaged me and she's like, you sent me the wrong one and I had to send her the right ones. I just told her to keep the wrong ones. You know, I don't want them back. I mean, I paid a whole 10 cents for them, but I've just been really frustrated. And so that's why I'm not, that's one of the reasons why I haven't been on social media lately is because I have been really flustered. I am trying to look at my business and figure out you know, what am I doing wrong and fix it? Sorry for the noise. And then we've just had so much going on in our lives and I feel like I just need to calm down and focus on what is most important right now. And that's my family life and my business. And that's just what I'm trying to do and keep from making these mistakes again. I've made so many mistakes with the parts this time. It's just different this time. I don't know why. I think it might be because I don't have as much space to move around. I've got things crammed everywhere. I mean, I know where the things are, but I'm not comfortable. I can't really move around much in my inventory room anymore. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, are you guys giving refunds for things like that? Let me know because it's just getting ridiculous. All right, well, I'm 
gonna hang up here for now and I will uh, pick back up when I'm at the flea market. All right guys, I'm finished at the flea market. I did great. I was there an hour and 15 minutes. There weren't very many vendors there again this time. I did stop and talk to a vendor and said, what's up with this? When Kimmy and I went last September or something like that, two Septembers ago, it was packed. We couldn't, it was hard to find a place to park. All the vendors booths were filled up. There were people out in the parking lot with tents because there weren't any covered areas available for vendors. She said, this is the worst it's ever been. She doesn't know what the reason is. But that Sundays are usually busier. But I'm pretty sure that Kimmy Goose and I went on a Saturday that time. I could be wrong. But I don't want to go in the heat. I mean, it's 81 degrees out there. It's beautiful. Kind of overcast. Who the heck wants to go in August in Houston? Not me. So let me tell you what I got, if I can remember. Um, it was so awesome, guys. It, for there not being very many vendors there, I did great. Now, some of you will remember that a couple of months ago... At the flea market, I picked up a brand new in the box, Homika Japanese handheld battery powered vacuum cleaner. And I parted it out, and I still have about five or six pieces. Right now, I've got to $200 profit after taking the $40 cost of goods out. I've made $200 profit just on that one machine, and I expect to make probably another $75 more on those other remaining pieces. Well, I found another handheld Japanese uh, vacuum cleaner, new in the box, not Homika. Cannot tell you the name of it. It starts with an F, I think. But I will, I've taken pictures of it. It should be on my Instagram. Oh, gosh, she's turned it on, made sure the battery was working. This thing is awesome. I think it's got a lot of attachments. I'm not sure. Got that one for $35 got a brand new in the box salad maker again never heard of the brand looked it up it's a great seller and nobody has the pieces what I want are the little cone pieces that go in it there's four of them um, and then I might sell the base new in the box and then at the same booth and I paid $25 for that one and then for $20, I got an espresso machine by Sowtech, S-O-W-T-E-C-K-C-H. And I looked it up, and nobody had the pieces for sale, and it, it sold for good money as a, the entire machine. So at that booth right there, I spent 80 bucks. okay? So they liked me. Um, the first booth I stopped at had two machines for $5 each. One was a Keurig. I never pick up Keurigs today, ever, uh, because they're so saturated. But these are, you know, the home Keurigs. I don't, I don't sell like the K ones, the K twos, or whatever they are. But this was more of a commercial machine. Five dollars. I kid you not. Huge water tank. Five dollars, and then a Hamilton Beach something or another for five dollars. I wasn't going to pass those up. And they gave me Sam's big, humongous thermal bags with handles to carry these in. It was awesome. And so that I wouldn't crush the pieces, right? And then I got to talking to them and I give them my usual spiel. You know, my boss uh, works for Airbnbs. We're always looking for appliances. Are you here every week? Oh, yeah, we're here every week. I said, do you get small kitchen appliances in? Vacuum cleaners? Yeah, we do. So they took my phone number, the guy texts me, he goes, next time I get, you know, some decent machines, he says, I will text you and you can come down here and take a look at them and I'll give you a good deal. So I finally did my first networking at the flea market. I was so excited. I can't remember what the other machine that I got was. Oh, I got another Keurig and it was another like commercial Keurig and it had a carafe with it, but the tank was really big and I, like I said, I've I haven't been picking up Keurigs, but I think these commercial ones will sell. And I think I paid $15 for that. It had a lot of different pieces in it. Let's see. So what else? Oh, so then there was, what I don't like about the flea market is they don't price their items. You know, they want you to come up and ask how much they are. And then, you know, it's just like clothing. They should just have a sign, $1, $2, $3, whatever. But no, they don't put any signs on these appliances. And then 
they don't come up and ask you, are you interested, you know? And so there was this Ronco oven there, and I typically pay no more than $25 for a Ronco, but it has to have all the pieces, you know, pretty much in the instruction manual if possible. I like to have the gloves. I like to have the little rotisserie thing that it cuts on. And and so this one only had the gears, the racks, and the door. And I just stood there looking at it, opening the door, hoping she would come over and say, hey, you know, what will you give me for this? Or are you interested? No, nope, she did. She just watched me. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fool with this because, for one thing, for the amount of pieces that were there, I was only going to pay about 10 bucks. So the gears um, are going for so much less money than they were before. The doors, oh my gosh, I used to get $60 for the doors at least. They're going for like half that. Plus you have to pay for the shipping and they're very heavy and they're kind of difficult to pack. So I was like, you know, if you're not even going to come over here, never mind. Um, then I stopped at a, a Christian resale shop and got a, I think it was a Black & Decker coffee machine. Looked like no one ever used it for $7.99. And I think that's all I got. But guys, I spent a lot of money today, but I'm going to make money. And I may not even go to my honey hole on Monday. I don't know I don't, how I feel about that because I've got plenty of clothing for the week. Now I've got plenty of appliances for, for the week. My problem is I always like to be prepared. Like what happens if I skip Monday and then the next Monday I don't feel well. My back is hurting or, you know, I'm running a fever or something, God forbid. Uh, what am I going to do? You know, then I will be out of clothing. I will be out of appliance parts. And then I will have to pull from my inventory and, which is fine, but I don't know. I have been also thinking about shrinking my store by just not going shopping for like a month and just running this inventory through and adding the AI and making sure the measurements are good and the photo, you know, switching a photo. We've talked about that. Switching a word in the title and, and doing it that way and getting my store to shrink a little bit. And I'm still pondering that because a lot of the items right now, guys, I have to be honest with you that are selling. They're items that I've just recently listed or they're items that I just recently um, inventoried, changed a photo, changed a word in the title, and made sure that multicolor is not in the drop down on the item specifics. I don't really fool with the prices. If they've been sitting there a long time, they're already marked way down. So I don't usually change the prices at all. No need to. I, I'm very competitive on my prices. The other thing I've been thinking about is this YouTube channel. I'm not sure how much longer I want to continue with YouTube. I love YouTube. It's my socialization. Possibly only will be going live because that's less time consuming. I'll get to talk with my friends and I'm not sure that I'm going to be uploading many videos in the future. I really am enjoying the social media break. I'm probably going to be taking a break from my OCD podcast as well had some issues with it recently that I won't even go into, but that have really, um, been so time consuming. And now that I'm only working for my boss two days a week, I really want to use those three full days of working on my eBay store. I mean, I haven't even hardly sold anything on Poshmark recently. I'm just not into it. I had the best month ever in March on eBay and it didn't hurt me at all on Poshmark because eBay made up for it. So, I don't know. YouTube is such a time suck. But for me, it's my socialization. And so, to get that, that would mean going live, working, doing hauls live, and not recording videos. Because then you got to put an intro and an extra and you got to upload it. And then you got to wait for it to upload and... It's just, I don't know, it's taking up too much time. So, hey, comment below. Do you like downloaded videos better? Do you like live streams better? Um, you know, I don't really know what to do with this channel because I'm starting to do appliance parts more and I noticed that the videos with appliance parts and the live streams with appliance parts aren't getting very many views. 
but I want to provide that content to people who do want to sell appliance parts. And if I go live every week, I'm going to be doing clothing hauls. Do you guys like clothing hauls? Those seem to be the ones that people watch the most. Um, do you like my shipping live stream better? Um, whenever I do shipping live streams, I always feel like I have to have a, have a topic. <laughs> and I'm terrible at topics. And so I don't know. I'm just kind of stuck right now trying to figure out what to do. And I love YouTube, though. I have made so many friends from YouTube. I've met so many of you in person. And it's just been a blessing to my life, really. All right, well, I'm almost at my parents' house. I've got Chick-fil-A for them, so then we're going to ride around on my dad's new, brand new golf cart, and um, that's what I've got planned for the rest of the day. I hope all of you have a wonderful week, and don't forget to paddle on because we're all in this business boat together. I'll see you next time. Bye.